It's me, David, and I'd like to welcome you back to Life with Parkinson's. Thank you for taking the time to watch. It's my Parkinson's birthday! It's my Parkinson's birthday! Woo! Five years! Well, back in May, it was my five year Parkinson's anniversary, or as we like to call it around here, my park anniversary. Five years ago, on May 28th, 2017, I was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, or as it was introduced to me, you have Parkinsonism. And I went through all their batteries of tests and MRIs and confirmations and extra appointments and feeling special. Yeah, good times. When I got that initial diagnosis of Parkinsonism, my life changed dramatically. I gotta tell you, it's tough news to get when you're 43 years old. Not the worst news I've ever gotten, but it definitely ranks in the top three or five. This video is basically going to cover the last five years of progression from, from the beginning basically until now. And when I think about that progression, I just want to let everyone know that everyone's basically not going to progress the same. We're all going to have different sets of symptoms. I found basically that everybody's Parkinson's presents a little bit differently. We all have different little symptom sets. You know, we're all very unique in this Parkinson's world. That's probably a good thing. I want to get right down to it. I'm excited to get going. So if you're new here, welcome. I hope you'll consider subscribing. And thank you to everybody else for coming back to watch another episode. What I've found from the beginning is that my Parkinson's symptoms mainly focus around movement, uh, rigidity, being very being very rigid and a lot of bradykinesia, a little bit of dystonia. I do get tremors from time to time. You know, when I get really emotional, really happy, really sad, really angry. It's basically been kind of like the Tin Man off the Wizard of Oz. Like I gotta wake up every morning and oil myself and get going and warm up the reactor and then I can start moving and attack my day. Well, I guess I don't really attack the day, but... So generally, I haven't noticed big changes that from like day to day or week to week, even month to month. But, you know, if I look at 2017 and I look at now, it's like, wow. You know, my motor symptoms have changed quite dramatically. Five years of change is a lot. For example, when I was diagnosed, I was still working full-time at the garage door company that I used to own part of, and I was working 40 to 60 hours a week. When I got my diagnosis, it basically went zoom right over my head. It's like, you gotta be kidding me. I'm 43 years old. I can't have Parkinson's disease. Actually, I don't know, even know what that means. I just continued to work full-time as if nothing had happened. You know, I'm a guy. I'm gonna deny the fact that there's something wrong with me. And I continued on with that first year without too many problems, which is probably a good thing looking back now that I stayed busy because, you know, when you do have like majorly traumatic situations happen in your life, you, I've discovered through the extreme grief that I've gone through that sometimes it takes your brain a little while to process it and absorb it because this diagnosis of Parkinson's or Parkinsonism can be very overwhelming and I remember my neurologist telling me it's going to take at least two years for it to sink in. So looking back I'm glad I was able to continue working full-time just to have that news sink in and absorb and find out you know what what's it going to mean to me to have Parkinson's? What What's it going to look like? And if you're struggling with that question right now and you've had that diagnosis recently, you know, I understand it's it's very overwhelming what you're going through. It's, you know, I'm, I'm only five years in and I can look back now and say to people that are new, take some time to consider your diagnosis. Take some time to find out what it's going to mean to you, what it's going to look like in your world, what's it going to look like in your family, you know, what's it going to look like if you're with somebody? What's it going to look like for your partner or your spouse? You know, there, there's a lot of questions to answer there. And I'm glad I was able to continue working for as long as I did full time. Just to have that regular routine, something to do that you're familiar with, just to help explore this whole new world of Parkinsonism. It's, it, it's a lot to take in. And after that first year into the second year, it was into the second year that 
the symptoms really started to show. Like when I was at a customer's and I was with someone else and I, let's say I would go to the van or I would go use the bathroom, which happened time to time at people's. You're working in the residential world, there's got to be a bathroom around. I would hear that people would ask, is Dave okay? He doesn't look very good. Or people would just come out and flat ask me if I knew them well enough. They would be like, are you okay? Is your shoulder, did you break your shoulder? Is your back hurting? And I would be like, okay, people are starting to notice. I'm starting to get a little bit nervous. You know, when things like that happen, it really makes you consider that, hey, there is something happening to me. So yeah, if I was to quantify my symptoms back from 2017 to now, and just, just under motor symptoms, I would say, yeah, I've lost a lot of like fine motor skills. Like when I'm writing a letter by hand now, it's pretty messy and it looks like I'm just learning how to write and I'll make a lot of mistakes. It's basically because, you know, I've just lost fine motor skills and the letters, the ABCs just don't come out like they used to. Another major thing that is considerably different is I just can't jump out of bed in the morning and get going. Let's say I don't know, wake up at early in the morning and go for a walk. Yeah, I, I can't do that anymore. Uh, my dystonia, my like, toes will curl over. I know a lot of you have mentioned that. You know, your toes curl over while you're doing something or while you're exercising. That happens to me a lot in the morning. I just can't get up and go for a walk. One of the last times I did that in my complex my toes curled over so badly and that right leg just cramped up so much but I just had to sit down on the grass and I, and I knew someone would be come and ask if I was okay. I'm in a 19 and over complex and I love it here so someone picked me up and gave me a ride home. It's funny but I just can't jump out of bed and do that. I've got to warm up like an old diesel truck. One of the things that's become extremely difficult to deal with in relation to just motor symptoms is freezing. You know, you're walking and you get into a corner or you're in the coat closet trying to get a coat out and you just freeze up and you can't turn around, you just get trapped there. Like the physiotherapist said, try to march in place when that happens and turn around. I've had other people say, shift your weight back and forth. I've tried a number of different things and I've found when I freeze up, and I try and walk backwards, so I'm, I'm going to lose my balance a lot. My main solution is just to try and get on the ground and get on my hands and knees. That's not going to work in every situation, or I'll call for a chair. I'll call my wife and she'll bring me a chair, and I'll just try and flop down in that. But when I'm alone and I freeze up really badly, yeah, I just try and get down on my hands and knees. It's the best thing I've come up with. But yeah, the freezing is, ah, probably for me, it's one of the worst motor symptoms that I've encountered so far. Along with that freezing is slurring my words. Like when I'm becoming, when I'm close to getting off, which I am now, I'm gonna, probably going to stop here and take a shot of Movapo. Yeah, slurring my words. And for me, it feels like the words are coming out normally. But my wife will be like, hey, can you say that again? And I'll be like, ah. Am I slurring my words? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm drooling as well. So it probably means I'm slurring my words. But in my brain, I hear them come out properly, but then I'm not saying them properly. So I can't really actually tell a lot of the times when I'm doing it. For someone under 50 years old, yeah, it can be frustrating. The next motor symptom that is becoming very difficult to deal with and that I've noticed a huge difference over the last five years is driving. This is a tough one because driving is basically my independence, right? But I've come to the point now that if I had to commute five days a week to work, I wouldn't be able to do it. It would just be way too exhausting. You know, I can handle the one day a week I go to work right now, but driving for any more of that, it would just knock me right out. Before driving, I gotta make sure I'm completely on. I've topped up on all my medications or taken a little bit extra if I think the drive is going to be a bit harder. It just seems to burn through the medication really quick. And yeah, concentrate because I don't want to cause any problems. If anybody has a spare body that we can transfer my brain into, sign me up. If you're enjoying this content and you want to help others find it, please hit the like button. That is the best way that you can help more people find this video who are looking for it. Thank you. Non-motor symptoms is an area I've been quite concerned about because when I read 
or a hear about the things that can happen with non-motor symptoms, it's terrifying a little bit. You know, with the type of Parkinson's I have that's mainly movement related, you know, with the type of Parkinson's that I have, non-motor symptoms are going to be more of a concern in the future. I'm just trying to prepare for them the best that I can. But when I look back the last five years until now, I actually feel really good now. And that's mainly because I've got that Parkinson's Rescue medication, the Movapo. It's helped me a lot. And I've been able to reduce my stress level a lot by, you know, by uh, you know, changing careers, not working full time, you know, focusing on my self-care, putting up boundaries for things that I can and can't do, and you know, focusing on my self-care and putting myself ahead of others. Yeah, I just don't really have any choice, you know, you have to do that. It basically comes down to that I've got so much energy that I can spend in one day. And how am I going to partition it out? I've got to put up these boundaries. Other people don't use my energy that I'm you know, saving for this activity that's very important to me to do. Right? It's just everything takes a little bit. Everything I found that with non-motor symptoms, everything that you do just takes a little bit more energy to do. Then when we don't have Parkinson's, right? Well, you know, like let, let's say pre-Parkinson's, you know, we could go to work for a 12, 14 hour day and then go out and, you know, go out with friends and family and have dinner and stay out for another five or six hours. <laughs> and geez, today, a 12 or 14 hour day at work, you gotta be kidding me. And going out after, are you nuts? I just wanna lay down and sleep for the next three days. You know, it's after seven o'clock, it's night night time. Right, so our, I found that my energy level is definitely very different. Going along that same theme with the energy level is my stress level. Stress is um, very hard to deal with. You know, for me, stress and anxiety are the worst symptoms of Parkinson's. Like, they just bypass, like if you were to add up all the motor symptoms, all the non-motor symptoms, they would not even come close to matching what the stress and anxiety can do to me. You know, I feel good now, I'm, you know, I'm making this movie, but when I hit the publish button, oh my goodness, that anxiety just was like, ah, unpublish, unpublish, but you know, I, I just leave the video up, people will find it, but yeah, the anxiety is probably the main symptom out of all the symptoms, and the number one non-motor symptom, it's just, I, I just don't react to stress the way that I used to. You know, whatever the Parkinson's does to your brain, or a lot of it also has to do with the medication that we take. Stress is just when you've got this when you've got this big problem and you've got to deal with it. Like the only way I, I can't tackle the whole problem as one whole, right? The only way that I can deal with it with my stress and anxiety is just try and break it down into little pieces and deal with them one at a time. It's the only way I can do it. My brain has changed a little bit. It's just, I've got to be conscious that stress has to be dealt with differently. And if I don't do that, I'm just going to burn up all my energy. I'm going to burn up all my reserves. And, there, and there'll be no chance that the problem gets solved. My tendency is always just to run headlong into a problem and solve it. But I've got to realize I'm not who I used to be. And I've got to realize that I can't solve problems like I used to. I've got to solve them at a slower pace, and, and that's okay. Things are different, and I need to adjust. Another non-motor symptom I had problems with at the beginning of my diagnosis was my memory. But thankfully, through antidepressant medication and you know, stress reduction, my memory's basically come back to what it was. I'm very grateful about that. While the last five years have seen major changes in my non-motor symptoms as my motor symptoms, through self-care and self-management and just, just basically trying to put myself first and in, in as reasonable a fashion as possible, hopefully my non-motor symptoms stabilize for a long period of time. So what do I see in the future? As you know, as we all know, Parkinson's has a known outcome. Like eventually, my symptoms will get really bad. Like I don't want to deceive anybody here and just say that, oh, if you exercise and take all your medication and supplements, everything is going to be okay and your symptoms won't progress, and you'll basically 
you're going to be that person that's going to do anything they want, whenever they want, all of the time because because you've come up with this magic formula. Uh, no, I don't. I don't want anybody to think that. You know, I I know there are a lot of things that we can do, and I've done them through exercise and self care and self management, eating well, sleeping well. Well, if you can fall asleep. But you know, I don't want anybody thinking that their symptoms aren't progressing in the background, because that's that you know that's what Parkinson's does. It just moves along at its own pace, and there are a lot of opportunities that we can extend that Parkinson's honeymoon period for a long amount of time. Yeah. But you know, in the end, there is a known outcome. I just want to delay that as long as possible. Sheer will and determination won't solve my problem. It won't take away my Parkinson's. But I want to use that sheer will and determination to keep a productive life for as long as possible, right? I want to be productive and effective for as long as possible. There are many things that I would still like to do in this lifetime, and I'd like to be able to do them. So, bucket list, here I come. It's my Parkinson's birthday. It's my Parkinson's birthday. Woo, five years. I'd like to thank you for watching and being a part of my life and my channel. If you've got some thoughts or comments on this video or some experiences in your Parkinson's journey, on maybe an anniversary that you'd like to share, I would love to hear them. Please leave a comment below. Let's take this journey together. Thank you and have a good day. Goodbye.